All right, so this is where I'd left off in the last video. I installed this pipe in my frame, and I also made these inner frame plates just to box in uh, that section of the frame to make it stronger. And I cut the pipe so that it doesn't interfere with my drive shaft. That's gonna be really strong. And then now I have to make some brackets to hold my forelink in place. Also in my previous video, I mocked up my whole truck. I had the bedside installed, and that was just to get my wheelbase, get all the measurements so that I know how long to make my bars for the forelink. So I'm gonna start figuring out my geometry, and then I'll show you how I do it. I'm just gonna do a little sketch to demonstrate how I'm figuring out the geometry for my forelink. And I just wanna say that I'm not an expert at designing forelink suspensions or anything like that. I'm just doing it at the best of my ability. As you can see, I drew two tires. That's gonna represent the wheelbase of my truck. And right under that, I drew a straight line. That's just gonna help me uh, figure out my three key points. I'm gonna show you what those three key points are right now. The first key point is gonna be the front bumper of my truck. The second key point is gonna be the point of attachment of the mounting bracket on my frame. And then the last and final key point is gonna be the center of my rear wheel. Now that I have my three key points, I have to figure out the size of the mounting bracket that's gonna be on my rear end. For my truck, I'm gonna make it nine and a quarter inches. That's gonna be where my mounting holes are gonna be located on the mounting bracket on my rear end. So the mounting holes are gonna be nine and a quarter inches apart and they're gonna be centered across the marking I made earlier. Now that I know the location of my mounting hole for the rear end, I can just make a straight line going from that point all the way to the point at the front of my truck. And then the same thing for the bottom links as well. Now that I figured out the angle for my bars for the forelink, I just have to connect the dots at the marking I made earlier where the mounting bracket on the frame is going to be connected. That's going to give me my height for the holes for the mounting bracket that's going to be connected to the frame. When I do this full scale, it's going to give me the measurements of the front mounting bracket and also the length of my bars. I may not be the best at explaining things. Hopefully now you know kind of how I figured out my geometry for my forelink. But now it's time to do exactly what I showed you, but full scale. So here's what I did full scale. I made a marking at the front of the truck and then I did the exact same thing as I showed you earlier. The measurement for the rear that we already knew, nine and a quarter. And using this technique, I figured out that the front mounting bracket holes are gonna be seven inches and five eighths apart. And then I can also measure this straight line here. That's gonna give me the exact length of bars that I need as well. I just picked up this piece of square tubing. It's three inches by four inches, and uh, it's the same thickness as my frame, 3 16 So that's gonna be what I'm gonna use to make my mounting brackets for the frame and on the rear end as well. I made my pattern with some simple foam board. I think that's gonna look pretty cool. It's optional what you want your brackets to look like. Um, it doesn't have to be that size, but you just have to make sure that your holes line up with the geometry you figured out earlier so that your pinion angle is correct. So I just drew my pattern on the square tubing. I'm gonna cut this with the plasma cutter, try and make a nice even circle so that it fits perfectly on the pipe.
All right, so before I weld up all the mounting brackets for the four link, I'm gonna make sure my frame is laser straight, everything's squared off, so that way it's a lot easier to measure and make sure that the links are straight. And I'm probably gonna end up making a few cross members to stiffen up the rear since there's not really anything there yet. Um, the frame rails are pretty flimsy with nothing there. This is the pattern I have to cut out with the plasma cutter. This piece is just gonna go right over top the fuel tank. I had ordered some pipe to mount up to my heim joints and it just got here. This is quarter inch DOM with a two inch outside diameter. This is some heavy duty pipe. It's more for some off-road applications, but I think it's gonna look great. It's a little beefier than what you typically see on a street truck, but I'll never bend those. And if I do, I'll have some bigger problems. I don't have a TIG welder, so I got my buddy Joel from Six Owl Customs to weld the ends on my pipe and it turned out amazing. He always does a really good job. I'm gonna have to get him to weld my fuel cell when the time comes. Um, but these are gonna look really good when they're installed and bolted up on the chassis. It's really shaping up. Super exciting anytime you make a little bit of progress. And certainly when it's this much progress, because um, the end is in sight for this frame. Honestly, there's not a lot of work left to do. I went a little crazy off camera, but I got some pretty good progress done. So you can see that there's this new uh, rear cross member. I made a plate for the, that's gonna be over top of the gas tank. Uh, that really stiffens everything up and it's gonna be bolted along the edge. Um, another cross member right at the bend on the frame there. And another one over the rear end. I actually had to bend it up a little bit so that there's enough clearance for the travel. I welded up all the frame, the rest of the joints. I made sure it was 100% laser straight. So now I can finish mounting the brackets on the rear end and everything for the four link. Um, now that I can measure off of the frame. I didn't get any shocks yet. Uh, I think I'm just gonna steal the QA1 shocks from my uh, 72 C10 and just uh, mock everything up for those shocks and then eventually I'll get the same ones. But the brackets for that shouldn't be too hard to, uh, to figure out. And I'm also gonna have to figure out how to stop the side to side movement with my rear end. And I think the Watts link is gonna be the answer to my question. So that's gonna be in another video as well. 